Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. Now, anatomy and physiology is such a huge part of medicine. And I know a lot of people that watch the channel and that follow me are medical students. And so today we're talking about my top tips for how I smashed anatomy at medical school. This video is kindly sponsored by Ken Hub. We will come onto them a bit later. They're a great anatomy revision resource. And of course, we are repping the University of Leeds t-shirt today to shout out the Uni of Leeds. Let's get into it. Number one, and I am controversially starting a top tips video with actually a thing that I'm telling you not to do, which is number one, you don't need an anatomy atlas or a massive physical anatomy book. You just don't need it. You may have needed it maybe like 10 years ago, but nowadays we have this thing called the internet, which can be your reference guide for pretty much everything. And, and trust me guys, I get it. I understand the vibe. I was a first year medical student. I was asking people, you know, medical students need books. What books do I need to pass med school? And someone said to me, there's this anatomy book that's good. And I bought this massive anatomy atlas. I literally opened it three times during my whole degree. And it sat there gathering dust on the shelf. And I still did really well in anatomy. So honestly, guys, you just don't need it unless you're looking for something that's going to decorate your house really nicely. Number two is make the most of your time in the dissection room. Now, when I was at med school, we had full body dissection. At some unis, they have pro section where you just look at the cuts. Where I went to university, we had about five people each sharing one cadaver that they'd be working with. Now get this, uh, you will never get that opportunity to do that again. And it is the best way of being able to visualize and understand the anatomy because you're actually seeing it. You can see the muscle. You can dissect that muscle and see the nerve that innovates that muscle. It's crazy when you think about it. This is as good as physical and visual learning goes to so make the most of it. If you get an opportunity at med school to spend extra time there, if they open it up for people to do their own revision there, just go for it. Dive in, be that loser who's spending more time in the dissection lab amongst that smell of formaldehyde. Get used to it and it does make you very hungry. That's not just a myth. Just enjoy being in the dissection room and try and make the most of your time when you're actually there. Tip number three is the blank draw. Now, the blank draw is my ultimate way of learning anatomy and what is what I did to actually understand and consolidate my knowledge of anatomy when I was at med school. And I'll explain how this works. We understand that learning anatomy is an extremely visual thing. The way they teach it in medical school is in the dissection room. So clearly they understand as well that learning it by looking is the best way of doing it. If you can't be in the dissection room, the next best thing is to make the dissection room on your piece of paper. And by that, I mean, draw it. But this is how the blank draw works. You don't need any fancy textbooks or resources. You can literally go to something like Google Images and search for something that you want to understand. So let's say we want to learn about the muscles of the forearm. We're going to copy this image in our own style and then we're gonna label it. And then what we're gonna do is do the same thing again but do it without the labels and without looking and we're gonna relabel it ourselves. I've made this really confusing, but let me explain it to you. Let me show it to you actually. Let me grab my iPad. I am going to pick, this is a really simplified version. I'm gonna choose a very simple image like this one. You could choose a more complicated image like this one. And if you are learning anatomy, this is the kind of thing that you should be picking. However, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna pick something that's just got less uh, on it. So I've pulled that up. I'm also then going to go to a drawing app. However, you can obviously do this on a piece of paper. And then I'm quickly going to draw this out. So I have got this is the ulna side, and this is the radial side, and this is a left forearm. Then what I'm going to do is I can even color it in the fancy colors that they've done if you wanted to. But the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to label it. So this one is flexor carpi ulnaris, label the rest. So this one is palmaris longus, which not everyone has. This one is uh, 
Flexor Carpa Radialis, and this one is uh, Pronator Teres. So obviously I would label these in full. The next thing I'm going to do is what we call the blank draw. The blank draw is basically where I take this, if you're doing it on paper, you're gonna have to draw it out again. If you're drawing it electronically, I'm literally going to rub out all of the labels that I've done, and then I'm gonna test myself by trying to label it again. So I'm gonna rub out all of these labels, and then I'm going to now test myself to see if I can remember what these are. So flexor carpi ulnaris, um, palmaris longus, and so and so. So I've tested myself to know that I'm able to look at the image and I'm able to recall what all of these structures are. Now the next level up after that is, I'm going to rub out the whole image will start on a new piece of paper and I'm going to see is if I can draw it from scratch. If you can draw it from scratch and then you can label it from scratch as well, you're really consolidating that knowledge. And as I said before guys, anatomy is such a you know visual learning experience and this is what I personally found as the best way of being able to learn anatomy. So when you're able to do that, not for something as simple as this, but if you're able to do that for something slightly more complicated, like a diagram like this, your knowledge of anatomy is going to be so, so good because you can, from memory, draw out that image. So if you're ever in an exam and you're thinking, I wonder what their structure is, they've put a pin in something, if you can draw it out yourself, you're gonna know what that structure is. Tip number four is test yourself before you wreck yourself. Basically what we were doing in the blank draw is testing ourselves and testing our knowledge. And we all know about spaced repetition and active recall, and we've watched those Ali Abdal videos. Let's not pretend that you haven't, so I'm not gonna tell you that again, because we understand now that that is the best way to learn anything. So the same thing comes with anatomy, test yourself like this, test yourself with practice questions, again and again and again. A good place you can find practice questions for anatomy is on KenHub, who are kindly sponsoring this video. KenHub are the ultimate anatomy revision tool. It's the kind of thing that I wish I had when I was at medical school. It has loads of animation and video materials and also over 500 practice quizzes, questions, and what's really cool is that you can even create custom quizzes. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about testing ourselves. Say you're meeting the scary upper limb consultant tomorrow and you wanna learn about the elbow, head into that specific study unit, watch the video, do the quiz and test your knowledge. If you wanted to look something up in particular, you can use the muscle anatomy reference chart, which is the ultimate Bible for all things anatomy with all of the muscles, innovations, and functions. A lot of KenHub's features are completely free, but to get full access to all of the content, especially all the videos and quizzes, you do need a premium subscription. If you use the link in the video description, you can get 10% off any premium subscription with KenHub, and they also have a seven day no fuss money back guarantee. So basically, if you've signed up to premium and you're not happy for whatever reason, you can just get your money back. Now on to the next tip, we are talking about creating spider diagrams. So we've already talked about the blank draw and a way that I found very useful to be able to expand the blank draw is by creating it into a spider. And the way you do this is by thinking not just about one thing, but about the process. For example, if you're learning about a particular part of the body and a muscle, a useful thing to do instead of just learning the name of that muscle and what it looks like is to learn around that too at the same time. You can learn what nerve innervates that muscle and also what function that muscle performs. And you can add this to any drawings, to any blank drawers that you've done. So here's our example of the blank draw that we did earlier. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take each muscle in turn. For example, let's start with flexor carpi ulnaris and we're gonna write what innervates it, so which nerve innervates it, we're gonna write where it inserts, and we're also going to write the function as well. So we've got flexor carpi ulnaris, the nerve that innervates it is the ulnar nerve. The action of it is to flex and adduct at the wrist. The insertion is the pisiform and hook of hamate, and the anterior base of the fifth met. 
Now what we have, if we do that for each one, is we've created this awesome diagram that not only tells us what muscle, but it also gives us loads of information about different things as well. And you can expand this and expand this and go into more detail if you want to. And then what you can do is start from the beginning with a blank piece of paper, try and draw it out again, try and write the nerves on again, and then try and recall all of this information again. So we're just consolidating all of that information and again and again. So start with a blank piece of paper and see if you can get to the end. Okay, final few and me tips now. I personally am a very visual learner and I found it helpful to not only look at and draw my anatomy but also have it up on the walls. So when you see people with pictures of anatomy up on their walls similar to what I've just drawn then, sometimes people are just doing it to show off, other people actually do learn from it. So I actually did learn from that. So if I stuck them up on the wall every so often I would look at it and try and test myself and sort of remember. So if you're also a visual learner, don't be afraid to make these into actual pictures, just stick them up and make some crazy anatomy mural on your wall. Finally, we've talked a lot about testing yourself. A good way of learning is to test someone else and also to teach someone else as well. So one of the best ways you can consolidate information that you've learned yourself is by actually working with another person and trying to teach them it. So teach them as if they're a five-year-old all of the different things to do with anatomy, to do with the muscles, to do with the bones, to do with everything that you know, and it consolidates your own knowledge. One of the best things about med school is just how social it is, and there's so many people that you can get together with, that you can test each other, that you can find gaps in your own, own knowledge, because ultimately that is what you need to be doing. When you're going towards revision time, instead of revising from A to Z, you need to start with what you don't know and you don't know what you don't know unless someone has shown you what you don't know. You know? That's it guys, that was my top tips for smashing anatomy at medical school. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a slightly different to my normal content. Big thanks to Ken Helm for sponsoring this video. As always, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments or send me a message on Instagram and I will do my best to reply. Take care everyone and I will see you in the next video. Just